All right, welcome back, baby. Today we'll be reading true Singaporean horror stories. Whoa. Yeah, I'm taking a short break from ghost hunting, so I decided um, why not read some of your horror stories. Ah. I asked you guys to submit some stories on Instagram. If you didn't see that Instagram story, too bad. You should have followed me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram at Sneaky Sushi so that you can be in our next video. So as usual, you guys pulled through. I have had hundreds of horror stories and some of them were actually pretty scary. So let's dive right into it. Also, welcome to my haunted mansion. Look at the background. This is the living room of my haunted mansion. Ooh. Let's make it a dusty old subway station. Look, ah, I'm in a subway station. Uh, oh my god, there's a train coming. There's a train coming. Ah. Guys, leave a comment down below on what background you want me to use in my next reading uh, horror story series. I'm sorry, you can hear Sushi's footsteps. She's like walking around. My dog, Sushi. Sushi, where are you going? Are you afraid already? Sushi, stop it. Can you see with me? Come here, you. Okay, I guess Sushi is joining us for the story time. Yeah, let's get into it. This one is by The Wedding. Okay, this happened when I was at home on the phone, sitting on the sofa in the living room. Then I suddenly felt something cold. I looked up from my phone and I saw a few people walking from my kitchen to the living room front door. Do you know these people? Then I saw a lady in all red tea pao with a veil covering her. Saw a guy also dressed in red walk past me. All of the people walked out of nowhere from the kitchen window, walking through my house living room till the front gate of the door and disappearing. What the f is happening? You got people crawling out of your window? Like, why aren't they just using the front door? I'm guessing these are spirits, but why are the spirits so stupid? Why climb in through the kitchen window? <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing at your trauma. It's just a hilarious story, dude. Like, people walked out of nowhere from the kitchen window. I just imagine like demons or like spirits crawling out of the kitchen window. Mm. Am I here? I'm here. Where's the party? Mm. <laughs> I don't know why my ghost sounds like a grumpy grandma. Guys, come here and climb through the window. Let's not go through the front door. Let's climb in through the window. I was like 10 at that time, so I didn't really know much shit, but was like, what the f- Why got people come into our house one day? I called my grandma and told her about it. She said I was dreaming about it. She then brought me to the temple to go pai pai and pray. Now I know it's a ghost wedding. Scary as fuck that I experienced a literal ghost wedding in my house, walking in front of me. Did someone send the wrong address for the ghost wedding banquet in your house? Why are the ghosts climbing through the kitchen window? Do ghosts not like front doors? Do they not like doors? Why? But that was interesting, a ghost wedding. Your house must have had some very significant meaning. Maybe the past tenant uh, wanted to get married, but he passed away. I'm surprised you didn't freak out. I would be like, hey man, what's going on? Like, why are y'all climbing through the window? I have a front door. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for submitting a story. Okay, this one is by Son of Jay, who is Jay. I have encountered several paranormal activity, but the one that I vividly remember the most is when I was five years old. It was 10 p.m. ish, which is bedtime for us, so everyone was getting ready for bed. My mother needed to make a call to her dad first before sleeping, so I took the extra time to play with Nokia phone games. Holy crap. How old are you, Nokia phone games? I mean, I guess you would probably be around my age. Okay, that's not that old. Nokia phones were still around when I was a kid. I'm actually just 18 years old. Clearly, as you can see from my youthful complexion, I am merely 18 years old. Actually, I'm 15. After my mother had finished the call, she locked the room and we were going to sleep. A few minutes later, there was a knock on our room and my father's voice could be heard. Honey, please open the door. That could just be your dad, right? I excitedly ran towards the door to unlock it, but my mother suddenly pulled me back and said to not open it. Why? Why not open it? It's your dad. I was very confused as it was clearly my father's voice and I did not understand why she didn't want me to open it. The knock continued and the voice kept repeating, Honey, it's me. I'm home. Please open the door. Ooh, sinister. My mother did some praying while the knocking and the voice are still there. After a while, the voice and knocking just stopped. I asked my mother why we are not opening the door for father. She replied, That's not your father. Your father is working out of country right now. That gave me goosebumps. Very good storytelling, son of Jay. Like, I love that ending punchline. Like, I did not see that coming at all. Thanks for keeping me in suspense. Guys, I was just checking my camera and you know, because I'm using a Sony camera, so it has that face tracking thing. All of a sudden, the face tracking was here. There was a face here. What the fuck? I'm not joking, guys. Like, you know I don't bullshit and I actually go hunt for ghosts, so I'm actually curious. So that was weird. Why is that? Is there anything sitting here? Should I take out my EMF reader? God damn it. 
impromptu ghost hunting session. Also, this is a new place I just moved. I rented a new place. House tour coming soon. Okay, got my EMF reader. Is there anything sitting beside me? Anything here? Doesn't seem to have anything. It's not lighting up. Anyway, thanks son of Jay for summoning a ghost in my room with your story, with your good story, may I add. Yeah, but that was very creepy. So did you guys ever found out what that noise was? Maybe it was your neighbor who got drunk and thought that was his home. This one is by Wesley Leon Aruzu. Is that your actual name? Aruzu, Mr. Aru Aruzu? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make fun of you, but that's a very interesting name. I like it. My wife and I found a dollhouse below our void deck. It was new, so we thought, oh wow, this would be great to pass to my niece to play a little. So we brought it home and kept it in the storeroom for the time being. Oh no, I can kind of see where this is going. Random creepy dollhouse that you found in the void deck and you brought it to your home. I think I know where this is going. Slept that night like a baby until 2am when I heard a doorbell. But it wasn't from our door, it was coming from our storeroom. Our two cats ran into our room. I approached the storeroom and realised the doorbell sound was coming from the dollhouse. Oh wow! I thought to myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you for that neat little detail. Oh wow! Oh wow! I thought to myself. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny, but thank you. Oh wow, I thought to myself. It has electronics. Must be expensive. You sly motherfucker, you. Hmm? You wanna make a quick buck? I bet it's a haunted dollhouse, right? I haven't finished reading the story, but hey, you could probably sell that on Carousel for a big cha-ching. A dollhouse with electronics and it's haunted by a ghost. My goodness, you hit the jackpot. I hope you sold it on Carousel <laughs> to an unlucky individual who's gonna buy it. Must be expensive, but it's glitching out. So I pressed the button on it to switch it off. My wife then advised me to take out the batteries, you know, because we don't want it glitching out again and affecting our sleep. All was well until... Meow! We heard one of our cats having the zoomies around the house and mewing. The cat named Moyashi. That's a cute cat name. Moyashi. The cat then hid behind the bedroom door, whimpering. We jumped out of bed and went to see her. What could be spooking her out? We opened the door and saw her curled in fear with a small white rope tied around her tail. And where was this rope even from? Hmm. The rope was used to tie up items in the storeroom with the dollhouse. We immediately took the dollhouse right there and then at 4am in the morning and brought it back to the void deck where we took it from. We went back to sleep with our minds running wild. Could it be the dollhouse doing? Peculiar, very interesting. The moral of the story is don't bring back anything that you find in the void deck, especially toys. Because I mean I heard that spirits can embed themselves into things, especially toys like dollhouses and dollhouses or things that resemble human figures. Thank you so much and thank you for submitting a story, a very creepy story. This one is by Badok House. This isn't my encounter but it's my mom's. When I was young, we used to live in Chai Chi area and the flat my family used to live in is actually haunted. It was priced a damn cheap for house in late 2000s. After moving in, the house always had this bad aura and it always feels like it's dark even when there's light all lit up in the house. House. Why did I say house like that? In the house. And for my mom who can see shadows and like human figure shapes. It scared her a lot, especially when it's at night. She would tend to see a lady in red standing at the window in the living room. And times after my mom sent me and my siblings off to school. While she cooks and cleans, there would be toys and marble rolling on the floor, sounds coming from the playroom. The neighbor below actually complained a lot to my mom at early morning about the marble rolling on the ground. But none of us were at home, just my mom. The backstory to the house is that there used to be a couple who lived there. But the husband cheated and the wife took her life wearing something red, jumped down with a 10 month old baby. We eventually moved out after 10 years. Wait, is it Badok Block 99? There's a unit there that a story exactly as you described happened. I don't want to call this story fake and that you stole that story and incorporate it in your own. I like to believe that it was actually you who stayed in that house afterward. But if it is true, that's very interesting. I always wanted to visit that block. I actually almost made a video like going to that block and like investigating because I have heard about this very infamous story of yeah, a lady dressed in red and she committed suicide with her baby. But wow, you actually stayed in that house? That's very interesting. So according to your story, I guess it is actually haunted. Wow. Alright, Lucas. All my life, despite not having my third eye open, I was more sensitive to these things and could frequently see shadows, figures, hear sounds, be it footsteps or speech, to feeling when they are looking at me. Interesting start of the story. Also, this submission has uh, videos. The person sent a video and a picture as evidence, so we'll check it out later. This began during the Chinese seven month last year, 2023. It was the very first day the gates of hell are open and spirits are free to roam for offerings. I was currently working at a warehouse in Boon Lay 
it as I'm not too sure what the hell my job title was, so I'll just describe it. All I had to do was take a order list and go up the 14 floors to search for medical foul. The floors were something like scaffolding as the metal floors can be seen through gaps. The first day of the Hungry Ghost Festival, I was asked to go to level 13 to collect one single foul. There are four people that are usually sent to collect, however today only I had to go. Uh oh, a solo expedition. Once I reached level 13, it was pitch black. Imagine when you go to the cemetery and there are no lights. As there were no windows, I had to search for the light switch in the dark. And since I was the first one there, I had to be the one to switch the lights on. You can barely see your hands in front of you. Pitch black, that's what I'm imagining, cause that's what the cemeteries are like. Upon switching on the lights, I made my way down the middle row and started looking for my medical file. This was when I heard someone walking at level 14. This should be impossible, as for some reason, level 14 is inaccessible by lift except a staircase located in the middle of level 13 that led up to level 14. So uh, the guy sent a picture, this is the staircase that he was referring to, the only staircase that leads up to level 14. Seeing as my file I was searching for was right beside the staircase, it did not make sense that there would be anyone up there, and soon I can clearly hear it walking till it was right above me. As the floor had gaps, I tried shining my phone flashlight up to see if there is anyone, but for some reason, I couldn't see anything. I'm used to these interactions, so I whispered in Hokkien that I was just working and won't disturb them, them being the spirits, and will soon be gone. This was when the sounds started coming down the stairs behind me. Oh shit, son, you better run, man. If I were you, I would. Actually, I wouldn't run, I would shine my phone torchlight to see who was there, and if there was nothing, I would probably leave immediately. We always think that we won't be afraid, but when these things actually do happen, in front of your eyes, that's when your fight or flight responses kick in and that's when you really start to freak out and you may just run away. A similar thing happened to me when I was exploring Pulau Ubin. I thought I would investigate, but when I heard someone singing in the forest in the cemetery in Pulau Ubin, yeah, my gut instinct was to just get the f*** out of there. In hindsight, I regret I should have investigated, but it was an experience I'll never forget. Suddenly, the lights went off. Oh my gosh. The lights went off right when the footsteps ended behind you. God damn. Here I was in the pitch black with someone or something behind me. I sighed to myself as I tried my best to not fear them and walked into the dark with only my flashlight guiding my path, found the light and turned it back on and I made my way back to my boxes and files and continued doing my job. Salute brother, you did not abort the mission. Well done, comrade. I think most people would have left that place immediately, so good job for sticking to your guts. This was when one footstep became many. Truth is, I got scared, and so I got angry. I scolded in Hokkien and challenged them. Don't be hiding in the dark. If you got the guts, come out and show yourself. Good job, sir. All the sounds stopped and I continued my job. It actually worked. Suddenly, my whole arm and back started burning and I saw scratch marks on my arms appear. The entire experience, my goosebumps did not go away and I had this feeling multiple eyes were staring at me. From that day onwards, for the rest of the month, I would hear such sounds whenever I went alone to level 13 or 14. I got so used to it that whenever a shadow come at me, I would turn my head and stare at it and when it goes away, I continue whatever I was doing. You are very brave, sir. You asserted your dominance on these spirits. What a chat thundercock you are. Yes, you are, you brave man. Who's a brave man? You! You are a brave man. What's your name again? Lucas. Lucas, who's a brave man? You are a brave man. <laughs> like legit though, wow. It takes a lot of guts to just stare at a spirit and asserting your alpha chat thundercock aura at it for it to disappear like that. <laughs> Good job, Lucas. So let's look at the video that Lucas sent. All right, this is Where are you, stupid ass ghost who hurt Lucas? Come out, show yourself. He's a sweet man. Okay, I'm just kidding, ghost. If you, are, if you actually saw that, that was just a joke. Please do not come and haunt me. All right, so now this is the video. So apparently he says that we can hear the footsteps that he recorded in this video. So let's take a look. I do hear some footsteps. Let's hear that again. Yeah, it clearly sounded that there was something in the vicinity of Lucas where he filmed this video. I don't know if it's coming from above him or not. It looks like he's pointing the camera up. Are there any shadows there? 
But if what Lucas said was true and that he's alone in the warehouse, then it's very peculiar that there is so much noise coming from the video. And that's it for tonight's segment of Spooky Stories with Sneaky Sushi. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. There will be a part two because I have more stories that you guys have submitted. There are some very good ones that I haven't read yet and I think this video might be a bit too long. You guys really pulled through. You, you... What? Ice? I saw that f***ing square thing here again. My face tracker just teleported here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, thank you for watching guys and uh, yeah, stay tuned for part 2. There will be more stories that I'm reading. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so so much for submitting your stories. I had so much fun reading them. I'm thinking of an outro. I can't think of any. Okay, bye.